All right, eighth grade Bobcats, Mr. Flato here. Um, wanted to do a special Bob lesson for you guys. Um, coming tomorrow, we're going to have several personnel from Helena High School in the building, mostly school counselors, that are going to run you guys through the do's and the don'ts of high school registration. Um, high school registration is an exciting time, but there is so much information that they need to disseminate to you in a short amount of time. So I'm asking tomorrow... Um, that when they come in, leave your cell phones in your locker, put them in your pockets. Let's make sure we're not on those things. You will be required to bring one writing utensil, probably preferably a pencil for if you make mistakes. Um, this is kind of where high school begins. Even though middle school is not over yet, we still have several more months of work to do in preparation for high school. But I wanted to put out a Bob lesson today kind of to get you guys thinking about things overnight. Um, the reality of High school registration is you only have a few decisions to make as you get older and you go from freshman to sophomore to junior to senior. You have more and more decisions to make in terms of classes and what classes you're going to take. Um, but I wanted to get this out there and put a few of my thoughts out there for you guys. The real experts will be here tomorrow um, so you can start formulating questions so that you can make informed decisions on your freshman year. Before we get going on in that, let's make sure we're our best this week at HMS. Let's be Bob. Let's be safe. Let's be responsible. Let's be respectful. Let's be a learner. All right, a couple directions on tomorrow's Helena High School registration. Um, I want you guys to report to your advisor after fifth period. That should be at 119 on Tuesday, February 27th. Do not go to your sixth period class. Please go directly to advisor. There should be teachers out in the hallways reminding you guys. Um, special note, Miss Crawford and Miss Saramgard's advisors, I need you to go directly to Miss Nielsen's room, which is going to be your location for the high school registration presentation. Do not go to those two advisors as they have seventh graders during sixth period. Um, only bring a pencil. You do not need to bring anything else. And please, leave your cell phones behind. Leave them in your locker or make sure they're turned off. Um, we need to be very attentive to the high school counselors and the high school personnel. There's so much important information that they are going to give you that you can't be um, checking out on your cell phone. Um, eighth grade parent night is March 5th. Letting your parents know if your parents have questions, that is in the HMS auditorium. I will let you know a time um, or I let your advisors know a time when it has been finalized. And finally, re registration materials are due back to your advisor no later than March 6th. It's very important that we get those things back no later than March 6th to your advisors. Credits. High school is all about credits and specifically earning 23 credits in order to graduate. Um, these credits need to come from a variety of different areas, which I will show you here in just a moment. Um, some classes are required credits. You have to take certain ones, um, like English 1, 2, 3, 4. You have to take so many maths, sciences, so on and so forth. Um, some of the credits you get to choose what elective areas those come from. And that's very exciting. As you get older, you get into high school, you become more aware of who you are, what you're about, what you like, what you don't like, um, what you feel like you want to become, either um, in college or right out of high school, so on and so forth. Each class you take earns you a half credit per semester. Some classes are semester classes. So if you took, I'm going to make this up, um, Art 1, which is just a semester class. You take Art 1, you pass Art 1 first semester. You get a half credit for that. You move on to Art 2 for second semester. Um, and again, don't quote me on that. Art might be a, a, a full year. You can look in the handbooks when you get them. Then the second semester, you have an opportunity to earn another half credit. Um, some classes are year-long classes, so it's broken up half credit first semester, half credit second semester. Uh, but one of the things I want you guys to know is it's 23 credits to graduate from Helena High School. All right, I talked in the last slide about how 23 credits is needed and how those need to come from a variety of different areas. You can find this on the Helena High webpage um, if you want to go look on your own time. 
Um, you hear many of me, uh, many of you have heard me talk about the importance of English classes and how you have to pass four years and get four credits of English. Um, if you guys remember from the high school tour, once you get to be a senior, you can take some different types of English, so that gets really exciting. Um, one year of social studies, which is world cultures, um, most of you will take that as a freshman. Um, one year of American government, that class comes um, when you are a senior. One year of American history, that is usually a junior class. Um, two years of science, um, many of you will take earth science next year. Um, it's recommended you take earth science as a freshman. Um, three years of mathematics, um, I'll talk about that in a moment. Um, one and a half years of human performance or PE. If you guys remember from the tour, you get four different options there that they will talk about a little bit more at length. Um, it's really important that you choose the right PE. If you're not a huge PE person and you're not a huge fan of PE, it's really important because that one is one that'll get students tripped up. If they don't like PE, you got to find a way to pass that year and a half. Um, one half year of health. Um, that's the opposite part of PE. Most students get that done in their freshman and sophomore years. And then you have one year of fine arts um, that you have to take, and that can be more in the typical art classroom, art one, two, uh, ceramics, drama, um, any sort of music, band, choir, uh, orchestra, photography. So there's lots of different fine art options there. And then another year of career in technical education. I know many of you um, were really interested in um, industrial tech um, out at the workshops out there, um, the auto mechanics, um, which you can't take until you're a sophomore, carpentry, welding, some of those classes. Um, so you have to take one year of that. And then finally, you'll see at the bottom you have um, seven credits that need to come from different electives. And that's where it gets really exciting is you get to pick whatever you really like. Maybe you really get into welding and you love welding and you want to take welding one, two, three, and four. Well, three of those credits can come from um, your, your extra three years of welding that you take. Uh, maybe some of you are really into drama and tech theater, photography, more of the arts. You can take more classes there. Maybe some of you are really in that math and science mold thinking you want to do um, like a, a, a health, um, maybe post-secondary, learning more about that in college, you can take some advanced math and science classes. So it really comes. One of the things about being a freshman is for the most part, you don't have as many choices as I mentioned earlier than when you get to be a senior. If you look on the left, um, these are classes that they're going to advise you to take as a freshman. Um, you're going to take an English. Um, there'll be different AP and um, honors options with a lot of these that you can take. World Cultures, which is the freshman social studies. Um, math that I'll talk about on the next slide. Earth Science. And then that PE. So really when you start looking at your freshman year, you really only get a couple different options in terms of elective el electives along with the um, along with the different types of English, math, world cultures, earth science, and PEs that you can take. Um, as you pass those classes and you move from your freshman year to your sophomore, sophomore year to junior, you can see that here at the bottom, um, there are many more elective opportunities and that's where you're going to get your electives in. Granted that you're able to take care of business and pass these classes as you go. Let's pretend that you passed the first semester of English but not the second semester. Well, as a freshman, you got to take English 2 and then you're going to be taking another semester of English 1 all over again. Many students learn that the hard way that a lot of these classes are required and if you do not pass them, then you have to take them again. The last thing I'm going to talk about today is the math options, um, and this is also on the website, and I'm not going to talk a whole lot about it other than I'm going to say that you really need to have a great conversation, or your parents do with Miss Walsh, Miss um, Cook, or even the counselors if they have questions, and then if we don't know, we can direct them back to um, your math teachers. Your math teachers have a very good understanding working with you guys every day of where you're at. Um, what you can handle next year, what you're prepared for. Um, if you'll remember in the earlier slide, you have to pass three years of math to graduate high school. Um, so that's something to think about for many of you. For many of you that are taking algebra this year, um, Honors Math 1, you're in a unique position where you can come in with some math credit. Um, same with Spanish. Um, if you're in Spanish right now, I want you to have a good conversation with Mr. Zapata, and he can advise you as to where he believes your skills and your foundation is at. Um, those are the, the math and the Spanish are the opportunity to, for you 8th graders to 
carry credit into high school. Um, so this is kind of a flow chart of um, where you go with the math. Again, if you have questions, you can also talk to one of the counselors, or I would specifically advise you to talk to your math teachers because they have a better understanding of probably where you're at and what would be the best fit for you as a freshman. That brings us to this week's Jelly Bean Question of the Week winners, who are Alex Bullock, Aiden Bruner, Katrin Seleskar, Logan Wilkins, Leah Folio, and Havana Lane. The answer to, actually it was two weeks ago's Bob lesson was a coin. This week's Bob, excuse me, Jelly Bean Question of the Week is, how many days of the week begin with the letter T? If you think you know, submit your answer to the Bob Box no later than Friday, and check in next week to see if you're a winner. All right, Bobcats, let's go out and make it a great week.